Since we started cruising, we've tried just about everything when it comes to tenders. Our first one was uh, just a straight inflatable with soft floor. Then when we uh, bought uh, our Dreamtime, she had a rib aluminium floor inflatable and it was good. There's no question about that. Uh, a little bit expensive and in some areas it can be a bit fragile. It was damaged. Uh, we we're in need of another tender in a hurry and we, uh, we just picked up another inflatable soft bottom uh, off the internet, out of China. Great thing, cheap, lasted 12 months, all the seams fell apart and it uh, was literally taken to the dump. So we decided we want something more durable, we went to a tinny. We found a second-hand tinny and uh, you don't wear these things out in a hurry. But I have to say from a point of view of stability, this thing is so tippy, you've got just about got to part your hair in the middle, otherwise you're going to be listing the whole time. So we consulted uh, Professor Google extensively and came up with the idea of the Capitan boat collar. Now they tell us that it's easy to install yourself and that 70% of theirs are done by the, uh, the buyers. So we're going to give it a go and just see how easy it is. The Capitan boat collar comes with a very comprehensive set of installation instructions. They're reasonably easy to follow, but we do recommend reading right through them a couple of times before you actually get started. Almost all the hardware and fixings you will need also comes in the kit, even including the correct sized drill bits. All you have to add is a can of contact adhesive, a few tubes of liquid nails, and it's listed as being vital to get the original formula. You'll also need a good marking pen. First step in the process is to literally place the collar in position on the uh, outside of your dinghy and hold it in place with a couple of ropes. The idea is just to see what line it will take and that will allow you to mark out the positions for the fixings. There's a few different styles, of course it depends on the hull shape and what we've elected to do is go for a pointed bow on the collar itself because not only do we want it for stability and for the flotation, but this is a huge well fender. It's going to stop whenever it bumps up against our dream time. Hopefully it's not going to be doing any damage to her paintwork. The bottom of the collar runs along the chine of the dinghy. Once you've worked out exactly where that collar is going to sit, the next job is to use the provided template to mark the position of all the mounting screws about every 30 centimetres or 12 inches along the hull, ready for drilling. There's a special angled template to position the bow fixings, around 15 centimetres or about 6 inches rearward. Make a small mark on the top of the collar in line with each of those fixing points. It's then just a matter of using the supplied bit to drill all of your marked holes. I don't know about anyone else, but drilling holes in the bottom of your boat did feel a little bit wrong to me, but it's all for a good cause. It's now time to insert the fixing plates into the foam collar. The third layer in is a harder foam and the plates are simple to drive in right down beside this layer with a rubber mallet. Make sure they're all centered on your marks. The angled bow plate needs to go in on the correct angle but isn't too tricky. A liberal squirt of liquid nails adhesive is then applied in the slot to secure each plate and then left to dry. Day two of our boat collar job. What we've done is got through to the process where we glued all our plates in yesterday and you've got to let the glue dry. Uh, they recommend one, two, even up to five days depending on weather conditions. Well, we're in Queensland, it's nice and warm uh, and this has gone rock solid overnight. So it's had about oh, a bit over 24 hours and we're quite confident that it's uh, in good shape to go. Uh, one thing that the manufacturers do point out though is don't sit this out in the sun for the glue to dry because the sun will warp the foam uh, when it's not fixed anything. So uh, that's a little bit of a, a, uh, a caution. Just make sure you let this dry in the shade somewhere, preferably indoors, uh, and make sure it is good and solid that the liquid nails has gone right off. Next job is we're going to start attaching it to the hole. Each of the screws have to be assembled with the stainless steel washer and the nylon dome washer. And then what we do, we give a liberal application of the TEF gel on the inside of the dome washer right around the screw. Now this is to prevent any chance of corrosion once it's all screwed together on your hull. The trick is 
Make sure you do all your screws first before you start because once you start uh, screwing the collar onto the hull, you don't want to be stop starting to TEF gel and assemble the screw set each time you get to the next plate. For this part of the process, it's very handy to have both a cordless drill and screwdriver so you're not having to switch back and forth between drill bit and screw attachment. Long arms to reach your screws also help. With the boat collar rope back in place, you start at the stern and drill through your existing hole into the aluminium plate that you've glued inside the collar. Then you use the already assembled screws to secure the collar to the hull, moving forward all the way to the bow. With the first side secured, you can mark a line to shape the bow point. This can be cut easily with a saw or even a serrated knife like we did. We then smooth the foam off a little with a sanding disc just to improve the adhesion when we glue the two sides together. With the second side secured, the two bow sections were coated with contact adhesive, which we then let tack off before sticking the two together. We used some masking tape to hold the bow sections together overnight. This assisted with the bonding and the job was complete. We had intended to trim the overhang at the stern, but changed our minds and decided to leave it. This provided some additional flotation, but also extra bumper factor to protect our yacht's hull. It's also possible to get a small insert of the boat collar foam to go along the stern just to tidy up the whole job. That's something that we'll probably do in the future. What about the results? The difference is unbelievable. The dinghy is now completely stable in all conditions and virtually unsinkable. You can literally stand on its gunnel without a problem. For us it's also now possible to climb into the dinghy from the water which will be fantastic when we're snorkeling the reefs. We've been extremely happy with the performance of our little tinny with the boat collar and are convinced that after a couple of, uh, well, hits and misses, we've now found the perfect tender setup for us.